This is Good Together, the podcast that inspires you to create change in the world every day. Keep listening for actionable tips and tricks to incorporate eco-friendly practices into your daily life. We've been featured by Apple as the number one podcast for conscious consumers, and we can't wait to welcome you into our community of change makers. I'm Lisa. And I'm Laura. We're the founders of Brightly.eco, the new platform for conscious consumers. We believe in supporting all creatures, great and small. And our team of experts show you how to live and shop responsibly by sharing world-changing lifestyle ideas, products, and more. To read show notes from Good Together and to browse all of the planet-friendly goodness that we feature, head to brightly.eco slash podcast. And to help spread the word about the podcast, tap on this episode and share Good Together with your friends and family. A simple text message helps us grow and create change around the world. This episode is brought to you by Sheets and Giggles. Laura, you've probably heard me talk all the time about my love for Sheets and Giggles. I've been sleeping on their new sustainable eucalyptus sheets for the past eight months straight. I recommend them a thousand percent. Every week I wash them and put them back on the bed right away. They're my go-to sheets. All of my other sheets, even the ethical ones, are taking a long break. After hearing you rave about them for so long, Lisa, I finally got a chance to try their new eucalyptus comforter. So I'm a weirdo. I really like having a comforter on my bed all the time, even when we have the heat blasting. I haven't woken up once hot while I was using this one from Sheets and Giggles. It's a great ethical and sustainable alternative to the down comforter we used to use that's now sitting on our guest bed. Another thing I love about Sheets and Giggles is that they don't use plastic packaging and the materials don't use pesticides, so they're kind to our animal and insect friends. They also plant a tree for each sheet set that is sold, and they're passionate about giving back. They give 10% off to customers who donate their old sheets to homeless shelters, and they have donated over $40,000 to Colorado COVID relief. Good Together listeners get 15% off by using the code BRIGHTLYECO at SheetsGiggles.com. Com. Okay, listeners, you're going to have to forgive me for a few fangirl moments that happened during today's episode, because I've been using our guest products for years. I actually discovered them when I worked at Sephora Corporate a while ago, and they are simply amazing. So Tata Harper has been a pioneer in the farm to beauty movement since 2007, and Tata is passionate about using natural ingredients to achieve serious skincare results without compromising on her values. So in today's episode, I chat with her about how she started her company, how she's innovative to make sure her clean beauty products are just as effective as the ones full of artificial ingredients that we all can't pronounce, And Tata and I have a really important conversation around the role that price comes into play with ethical and sustainable products. So the old saying of you get what you pay for really does come into play. And it's fascinating to hear Tata's take on investing in ethical products from a consumer lens. All right, let's get into it. Okay, Tata, welcome. So welcome to Good Together. We're so excited to have you. Me too. I'm excited to be talking to you, Laura. I'm a big, big fan of the podcast. So when the team told me about this, I was really psyched. Yes. I mean, we, you know, I've actually been a big fan of your products kind of dating back to my days at Sephora uh, when I was, I used to work as a product manager for some of their digital uh, storefronts. So got exposure to your products back then loved their just efficiency, the packaging, the mission. So I know clean beauty is a huge, uh, you know, discussion topic of the Brightly community. So we're all thrilled to have you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. So um, Tata, you are the sort of, I don't even know how to say this word, eponymous or however, however you <laughs> say that. 
um, owner of Tata Harper Skincare, um, a clean beauty brand based in Vermont. And one of the things I love about Tata Harper products is that they really come from your own farm in Vermont. So I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit about about you, kind of what inspired you to start uh, your your line, and we'll just go from there. Absolutely. So uh, let's see. I am from Colombia. I am Latin. And, um, you know, as a very good Latin girl, our beauty rituals are sacred and not possible. <laughs> so I always grew up loving beauty, but never in my life did I thought that I would have a skincare company, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, I studied industrial engineering and I was having a totally different life. And it was really when my stepfather, Mauricio, got um, cancer and he was treated mainly here in the U.S. And I was living in Miami at the time uh, that I started really uh, the whole wellness thing started piquing my interest. Um, I ended up going with him to a lot of doctors and a lot of clinics. And I ended up realizing how important lifestyle is. Like mm -hmm. I had always been like a health and enthusiast, you know, like I love to exercise, eat well, like I was always kept up in like most of the health trends. Uh, but then I had never heard about ingredients that would increase, in, increase your toxic load or ingredients that were not a good idea to use. Like yeah. I was really kind of like jaw dropped, you know, like absolutely. Yeah. And especially because my stepfather, I mean, it's funny, but he just uses like five things max. And I had like a 50 things, you know, like mm. a closet of beauty. And it's, I was, I sometimes just looked at that and I felt like, oh my God, it's like an atomic bomb can go up in here. And, and actually like hearing from doctors about how I should try to help him find things that were more natural and that avoided all this industrial synthetic chemicals just made me realize that that was just like an area of my life that I wasn't paying any attention about. I was, I was being completely mindless. Uh, and I never really connected the dots, to be quite honestly, uh, quite honest. And uh, so I started my journey of cleaning up my life along with him, cleaning products, dry cleaners, you know, eating organic. Yeah. But really, skincare was the last frontier for me because I couldn't find products that speak to me. Yeah, I had always been. Uh, the opposite of minimal when it comes to beauty. Like I would say that I'm a beauty maximalist instead <laughs> of a beauty minimalist. And, and again, that comes from my culture, from my background. And I've always invested in beauty. And uh, when I remember like my experiences with natural beauty, this is like back 2005, mm -hmm. just to get an idea. Yeah. They were very simple, very pared down, very watered down. Like, okay, yes, it's 100% natural, but it's just like, one or two oils, yes, you know, like that type of thing, or botanicals mixed with synthetic chemicals, uh, which yep. is what then you would find at a lot of like the department stores and beauty brand and beauty stores that I was used to <laughs> buying products. It's like that, that no word, like would be like, guys, girls, please help me find natural products, and they would be like, this has algaes, this has roses this has orchids. But the reality is that then you turn around the box and you're like, yes, I see the orchids, but I see them mixed with 30, 40 in those yes. chemicals. You know? Gross. Like, what's <laughs> the point? What's yeah. the point? And then I started Googling, you know, like you start Googling, like, what are all these chemicals? Like, why it's are- It's shocking, they right? You're like, well, I don't even, I can't even spell half of these things, right? No, why are they on my face? Them, or pronounce them. <laughs> yeah. But the funny part is that when you want to be natural, like when you're like, I need something natural, then they talk about all the botanicals that are in the formula. But the moment that you question any of the synthetic chemicals, the immediate answer is like, you need synthetic to for things to work right yes like that's what we've all heard and yeah. i've heard it too so i started googling a lot of this chemicals that were there and then you realize that most of them are things like preservatives emulsifiers thickeners you know like nothing to do with wrinkles on your face making yeah. your skin better and 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 then just like the level of raw material, you know, like it's a lot of petroleum, you know, you Google propylene glycol. And I remember being like, oh, this is antifreeze. Like, you know, things that belong in my car 
that you're like, why is this in my eye cream? Like exactly products that I use every day in the most delicate skin of my face that I'm supposed to be nurturing and giving nutrients and vitamins. Like, why am I putting antifreeze? So that was really the moment that I was like, I, I can't believe that there's nothing in between. Like there was nothing that catered to a woman like me, but that had no synthetic chemicals. So then I started this whole thing about like, why is that, that that doesn't exist? Right. Because, yep. and, and why is it that natural products are represented in a way that it's not super advanced given that using natural ingredients it's a more premium and high quality way to go than all of this industrial man-made chemicals yeah right like why are they misrepresented so much and also the formulations don't reflect like the true depth of the technology right like there was just like a huge disconnect for me and I got really intellectually curious about it and really motivated to do something about it not only for me, but for my friends and my family that I kept talking about all these chemicals and they're like, shut up. Like, we can't find anything. Like, what are you yep. talking about? Like, this doesn't exist, Tata, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's true. It doesn't exist. And that's when it, I started working like crazy on this idea and just really like laser focus because I'm not someone that comes from the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was kind of like, I kind of like approach the making of Tata Harper as I thought and fantasized that natural, that skincare companies, how they worked, you know, what they were that, you know, you hear all these fantasies and you keep them alive in the products when you buy them. And then you realize that a lot of times things are not necessarily what you think that they are. Yes. But, uh, you know, which is what happened to me because it's like everything was challenged from that, that you know, like, a lot of the luxury consumers are not interested in natural ingredients. And I kept thinking to myself, like, there must be more women like me or men like me that don't want to put synthetic chemicals on their skin every day, twice a day. Exactly. I feel like there's so many misconceptions in the beauty industry, really in the luxury industry in general, too. But, you know, oh, um, you know, clean beauty is not elevated enough or clean beauty doesn't work as well. And I think what's interesting is that you kind of saw those challenges or you heard those misconceptions and you were like, no, I'm going to change this. Right. Like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try because it mm -hmm. was important enough, you know, because I think that now what we need, is a lot of consumer products that make our life better for yes. real, you know, not just like superficially better, but like really that they, prov they elevate our quality of life. And from that lens, it's what really kept me motivated and, and really like we I spent like five years creating Tata Harper because the formulas didn't exist. No one knew how to use like natural ingredients to preserve or to emulsify or to thicken or to stabilize. Like those were not like raw materials were used just for like marketing almost. Mm. Um, and uh, and there was not a lot of science around like the formulation aspect of natural skincare. And it took a really long time to make them happen and also formulate from a different point of view, because a lot of natural skincare was always formulated with this idea of minimalism and and a lot of like the the first gen natural products, they were created a lot by uh, by the Lojas movement. Remember that movement, that lifestyle movement that is yes. about being natural. So the fact that the product was natural was actually more important than that even that the product worked. Yep. Um, and 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 that's a no no for skincare because you only buy skincare to, because it works, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Why you, you don't like buy this moisturizer to save the planet. Like you buy this moisturizer, it's a great moisturizer. And then you have your charities and other things to do other things. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was really challenging. It was almost like with the creation of our company, we challenged almost every aspect of being a maker of skincare, not only from the ingredients and the formulas, but also by having our farm, like what you were saying before, the farm has been such a special place for us because a lot of skincare is outsourced. You yeah. know, the majority of the companies are outsourced. They outsource almost every piece of their of their uh, of their business to third parties, whether it's the formulation to labs that a lot of times end up using tons of bases and just mm -hmm. change like a 
per, you know, the smell or the color or the instead of vitamin C, now we're going to add hyaluronic or ginseng or, you know, things like that. But okay. you, you don't find a lot of companies that have very unique products and formulas that are really unique. So for us, it was always very clear that we needed to have our own R&D and our own formulation uh, and our own chemist and our own lab so that we can really formulate products from scratch like we like doing and uh, that every ingredient has a purpose and also every single one of our formulas doesn't rely on just one ingredient. Like we're not like on a one ingredient type of company. We're a company that buy ingredients from all over the world and use them in the, you know, in different formulas in very high concentrations. So yeah. um, no, I mean, I think it makes so much sense. And I love that you guys and your approach is truly like farm to beauty, right? I feel like that's such a um, sort of a marketing term that you hear thrown around alongside clean beauty, et cetera. But you're literally, you know, harvesting and growing ingredients on your farm for some of your formulas. Um, so can you explain a little bit more about how that process works in terms of, um, you know, like organic farming and sort of how you guys are uh, actively working the land? I mean, I think that's fascinating. <laughs> Totally. So just to clarify one thing, we do bring ingredients from all over the world. Sure. Like right yeah. Now we bring ingredients from like 84 different countries. Okay. Because we have like no self-imposed limit on uh, like, we're just going to talk about vitamins or we sure. are a vitamin C company. We really curate technologies from all, all over the world, whether it's green tech or you know, um, things from tradition, you know, from a lot of tradition, like traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, yeah. also bringing a lot of oils and butters from the Amazon. But anyway, so we, um, in the farm, it's, there's a couple of things happening. So number one, we have a garden where we grow a lot of, uh, and not even a lot, we grow specifically five herbs that grow really well in our soil in Vermont, in our farm, which is a clay soil. And those are calendula, borage, meadowsweet, alfalfa, and calendula. And we grow them in our farm, in our, in our organic farm. And we make one ingredient that, um, that we produce at the farm every single month that basically captures all of the oil soluble nutrition from all of those herbs and uh, and it's done in a very temperature controlled process that it's very specific and that ingredient that is called our farm beauty complex goes into almost every single one of our formulas but in the farm we also have um, a lot of barns because it was an old dairy farm <laughs> that we converted into a skincare farm now i love that <laughs> and now in those barns, we actually make our products like we make them right there, like science in the context of nature. So we bring ingredients from all over the world and there in the farm, we have our own production team that makes every single one of our products every single month. And okay. we fill them at the farm and we package them at the farm. And it basically it's from the farm to your doorstep. And the reason why we also decided to go that route and be the manufacturers of our products, which again, it's very unique and typically all of these is outsourced, is because a couple of things. Number one is a way to ensure quality. Because again, we buy a lot of ingredients from all over the world. So yes. we want to make sure, and it's very specific technologies most of the time. And we wanted to make sure that those were the ingredients that were added to our formulas. Uh, two, our formulas are completely proprietary and unique and no one has them either. So it only made sense to produce them also. And then thirdly, which is one of the things that is kind of like the cherry on top of the ice cream is that we produce exactly what we need. So when you're dealing with a subcontractor, let's say you have to produce the minimums of that subcontractor. And then yeah. sometimes that for a small company basically force them to keep inventory for many, many months that is just sitting on shelves before the, all of that gets rotated and up in stores, like at who knows how many months have gone by. And we, I love the idea of products arriving to stores when they're super fresh because our products last like a year and a half. Like that's the peak potency of the product. So I wanted to make sure that they arrived as soon as they were made and possible to store instead of lingering in warehouses because we made more than what we had to 
or worse, that you end up making more than what you had to. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're being wasteful and you have to throw thousands of products out just because they expired on you. Exactly. Exactly. I love that you, you know, you, you came at this from, you know, an efficacy uh, point of view where you wanted to make sure the products were as, you know, as fresh and potent as they could be, but then also realizing that you're right. Like you're cutting down waste when you're making things to order. And one of the things I'm really hoping that we can do sort of with this new movement of conscious consumerism is get more comfortable with that older, what you know, the old school model of made to order, right? Like, you know, yeah. we might have to wait a little bit longer, potentially, um, you know, if we order something and it's out of stock, but knowing that, you know, only what is needed is produced is so critical. And of course, that really flies in the face of, you know, people one click ordering on Amazon and things like that. So I'm hoping we can all be a little bit more conscious about that in the future. Yeah. But you can one click order. Like we have one click order. On sure. Amazon, but the point is not that. The point is that every day you operate because you produce and you go through the trouble of producing your products and not outsourcing this activity, it ends up just being a win win for, for many angles. Sure. Right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Taking this extra effort in house. Uh, Absolutely. And making it, which is at the cornerstone also of being a, a luxury company. Um, you know, like that's that's part of the thing. It's it's it, there is a craftsmanship around it. And also we produce what we need. And sometimes there's scarcity, you know, of things. Yeah. Things get <laughs> back ordered. Uh, it, we, we, we sometimes are like, oh, my God, this month, like so and so talked about like the resurfacing mask and we sold double than what we expected. And it's like, we need to go on back order, you know, like that's it. Like in two weeks, it'll be back. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned the luxury component because that was, um, you know, a question that Lisa and I kind of had when we were talking about this segment, which is so, so your products definitely tend towards the more luxury consumer market. Um, but I know that you have fans and, you know, uh, you know, champions of your brand sort of from all different walks of life and all backgrounds. Yeah. So, you know, I wonder in general, if you can explain to our audience like, why it's important for consumers to really invest in clean, um, you know, clean beauty products, clean skincare products that work. I mean, I think our, our audience typically, it's pretty split between millennial women and Gen Z women. And one thing that I think unites us all is that we all are, you know, trying to think through how best to take care of our skin, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Especially now, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> we Zoom all day uh, for our Zoom, new Zoom life. Um, yes, Zoom face. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Sheets and Giggles, a company with a punny name but a seriously sustainable mission to make better bedding for everyone. We started partnering with Sheets and Giggles earlier this year, and the positive reviews from our community keep coming in. I've been on a hunt for sustainable bedding for a long time now until Brightly actually recommended Sheets and Giggles. I would highly recommend the material is great. Uh, I personally tend to get hot at night and my boyfriend tends to get cold. So it definitely serves as a happy medium. Highly recommend. I also get hot at night and I found that after sleeping with sheets and giggles moisture wicking sheets over the past few months, I can't remember the last time I woke up overheated. I love my sheets and giggles sheets. They're my absolute favorite. Not only because they're super duper soft, but they are sustainably and ethically made out of eucalyptus. Yep, I love that our scout Ashley called out how soft the sheets and giggle sheets are. Plus, the eucalyptus that is in their 400 thread count sheets is grown without insecticides or pesticides. They also just launched a bunch of new colors, and I can't choose between navy blue and red. Help me! Sheets and Giggles bedding is super lightweight and soft, and they really nail it on zero waste packaging. We recommend Sheets and Giggles for the softest, most sustainable sleep out there. Good Together listeners get 15% off at checkout by using the code BRIGHTLYECO at SheetsGiggles.com. Oh my God, Laura, I just had my favorite vegan lunch ever. It was a green Thai curry. That sounds amazing, but what's your secret? I feel like plant-based meals have always been a pipe dream for me. I've been trying to cut down on my meat consumption, but I really don't have time to think up and prepare filling, tasty vegan meals. 
Same here. I've been participating in a vegan cooking challenge with the Brightly community, and I feel like I've totally failed. Seriously. <laughs> I feel like I've learned so many more meatless recipes this year, but when it comes to vegan cooking, I'm still very much intimidated. So when Thistle reached out to us, it was the perfect timing. Thistle's plant-forward meals are seriously tasty and are delivered ready to go on your doorstep. Right now, they're just on the West Coast, but they're adding more locations. Anyway, I was really surprised at how filling and super creative the meals are. The spices and the sauces they include are really unique and tasty. I loved how fresh everything was as well, given that it's mostly vegetable-based. Laura, I know both you and I love to cook, especially during the pandemic, but it's been a great addition to our weekly routines. It's a quick alternative to take out lunches between Zoom calls. Absolutely. Thistle is plant-based eating on autopilot. You don't even have to think about it, and bam, you're eating better for the planet. Good Together listeners can get $100 off with the code BRIGHTLY at thistle.co. That's T-H-I-S-T-L-E dot co. Well, I think, you know, clean skincare, it's a new term. When I launched, like that term didn't exist, like, Mm -hmm. right? So this is kind of like something new that really what in my mind had the way that I rationalize it, because obviously there's no like real definition of what that means, is company making efforts to avoid things that are controversial, right? Yep. And for some companies, that means one ingredient. For other companies, it means six ingredients. For other companies, that means 12 ingredients. For us, it means no synthetic chemicals. So we have a hard line on the formulas being 100% natural. And also, we believe that if you're going to take that hard line and you have very specific uh, validation standards and just like overall standards, like it's important that you certify your products to those claims and those standards. So for example, our entire collection is certified by EcoCert, which is an agency in Europe that it's like a 30 year old agency that they regulate cosmetics worldwide. And they look at our ingredient claims, our organic claims, and they also look at our, all of our sustainability efforts through packaging. So it's really an amazing, uh, an, an amazing thing. And, and those are the, you know, that's what clean means to us. Right. Mm-hmm. And everybody has different standards for clean, but in general, I think that it's someone that cares about their well being and their health. If you're someone like that, you definitely care about clean skincare just as much as you care about buying organic food and, you know, doing all those extra things. Um, and there's definitely people that love our brand, that comes from all backgrounds, all walks of life. Um, And, you know, on the luxury side of things, I say like, yes, our products ended up being in the luxury pricing, but, you know, we ended up there not because it was like an arbitrary thing that it's like, oh, that that wants to make this $120, you know what I mean? (laughs) It's really like a result of everything that goes on behind the scenes to make our products and to stick to our promise and our and the expectations that clients have around buying our products. And it's a result of many, many decisions that are made along the way, right? Like re- making good and responsible decisions are expensive. And those are hard decisions that I am confronted with every single day, me and my team trying to get around all of the implications of... Uh, of all the decisions that we make. Like for example, our formulas have, they're very hardworking because we, yes. because for that, it's an expected standard for our clients. It's not just about the vitamin C or the hyaluronic. It's about a curated collection of ingredients that deliver superior results when they're synergistically working together inside of a formula. So that co- costs Uh, You know, it's like if a typical formula has three, four actives and ours have 40, that's 10 times the amount, you know, you know, so it's like, okay, so there's that. Right. Uh, Then, for example, when we look at uh, buying natural ingredients, that's another thing. It's like if you buy a natural preservative, that's like maybe six times more expensive than buying phenoxyethanol or paraben. Right. Exactly. Uh, Also, when we look at our packaging. Like our packaging is uh, sustainable as well. So whether we use glass, which is expensive, or we end up using plastic that have high content of post-consumer 
back in them. That alone is 45% more expensive than virg- than just virgin plastic. Yes. So that you reuse plastic, it's actually almost 50% more than just creating plastic that didn't exist. But we don't want to, we want to minimize that. So we always go with the more expensive plastic. Same for the cartons, right? Like to tear down a tree and create carton, you know, like and create paper that is half the price than if you want to use uh, responsive, you know, uh, carton from responsibly managed forests or post consumer. Yeah, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's shocking. Really- well, it's not. It is. I wish I could say it's shocking, right? I feel like the reason, you know, why all these things are more expensive is because we haven't yet reached economies of scale with this type of, yeah. uh, you know, thinking, right? Like we have optimized as a world so long for just the cheapest possible outcome without thinking about impacts on the environment or reuse of waste. That to me, I'm always like, I can't believe that the financial gurus back in the day weren't thinking more strategically about waste because it's kind of a good financial thing anyway, if we can reuse what we have. The thing is, <laughs> that's a side, it's a sidebar, right? <laughs> totally. I mean, we all get excited, right? About things that are inexpensive and like the 1999, this or that. But once you realize all the shortcuts that are taken along the way to get to that pricing, immediately that level of excitement immediately goes out the door. Absolutely. You're paying, you know, you're going to pay for it one way. Right. And I think for too long, the earth is the one that has to pay. Right. While we are kind of just off, um, you know, off not caring too much about the downstream impacts. But and I think that a lot of the times why this hasn't been, you know, what you were mentioning, like uh, being wasteful, like why aren't these things taken into account is because to be wasteful doesn't cost, like it doesn't cost. Yep. To pollute, there's no cost associated to, to pollution. So if there's no cost, no one thinks about it, unfortunately. So that I think that that's the thing. Like you can be a polluter, have your car on, be polluting the environment, just be sitting there, right? Like no yep. one is going to charge you, but you're like <laughs> polluting the air. Like you can be producing much more than what you had to, but you have now have to burn it. And like, does that cost you money? No. So who cares? So, you know, so it's kind of like, uh, it's like a, uh, something that needs to change for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about the consumer portion of things and then we talk about the government portion of things. And that's where I think, you know, by by supporting policies that help people make, you know, like have to actually pay attention. Right. Like nobody wants to get a tax or a fine. But, you know, sometimes it's necessary to get people to to really stand up and pay attention. But I think in general, just this conversation about pricing is so important because, you know, we talk a lot about, um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to spend a lot of money to be eco-friendly. You can reuse what you have. You can cut down on your consumption in general. Um, but when you go out to purchase a new item, as we need to occasionally, um, you know, these these ethical and sustainable and more responsible products are oftentimes more expensive. So I appreciate you kind of breaking down why your products kind of end up in that in that region from that perspective. And the other thing I'll say about your products and listeners, I've been a fan of Tata's uh, just general products for a long time, like I said. So <laughs> they did not know I was going to say this. I'm just a big fan. Anyway, I I love that they're multitaskers, right? So they, they, they work really well and you don't need to use a lot of product. Whereas I feel like oftentimes with cheaper made products, um, you know, they, they're not as efficient. I mean, you've got to use a lot more. And one of my favorite products that you have is your clarifying mask. Um, and it's amazing for any kind of acne or like, you know, things on your face that, that just need to need to just leave. Yeah. <laughs> it does a fabulous job at that. So, you know, it's an investment, right? It's an investment just like um, you invest in better made shoes that are going to last you a long time. So that's kind of, yeah. that's the point I wanted to get across. And, and it's also, thank you so much, by the way, that's <laughs> so kind, but it's, it's, you know, I always give the same analogy to our team when we're talking about things. It's kind of like, yeah, if you go and you buy a inexpensive laptop, right? Like it's going to cost you a fraction of like, let's say an, like a new MacBook pro, but yeah. In order to have the same functionalities as your MacBook Pro, things that already come in your MacBook Pro, you would end up spending more money. And I think that that also happens in beauty a lot because of the amount of 
single active products that everybody has a temptation to buy. And then what happens is that you end up buying a vitamin C product, a hyaluronic acid product, a uh, vitamin B product, yep. right? And then what we actually created with our formulas is this kind of like, uh, like, like a new POV on all of these things and be like, well, why don't we just put all these things together, you know, so that you have all of those true and tried ingredients that you love plus more and everything is working really well together in this formula for you. So you don't have to buy like 15 different things that all can fit in one product and kind of like go into a skincare diet in the sense of uh, that you feel that you're covering your basis. I remember it used to happen to me as a consumer. I Everything felt important, you know, yep. equally important, whether it was the acids or the vitamin or like I wanted to have it all. And I was always curious about like, why can't I just buy like one thing that have all these things in one and uh, and it's all been thought out for me so I can just use less things or if I buy something, it's really, really, really hard working. And I think that that is uh, part of also the value proposition of our line is that it not only is all those things that we talked about, which is responsible and transparent and ethical, but also it's thinking about the multitasking aspect of and all the needs of skin. Because also, like, we all love vitamin C. I mean, I love vitamin C, but mm -hmm. vitamin C is not the end all be all of skincare either. Like, there's like, yep. you know, so much more other things that your skin needs to be worked on that are not necessarily provided by vitamin C. Yeah. Plus your team actively is making sure that these ingredients work well together. Because my fear back when I was the same way and used to have, I don't know, 10 products per night, my fear was that I was putting stuff on that was canceling each other out or I wasn't putting it on in the right order. And I'm sure that's that happens, right? So you guys are having a mind's eye to that as well. <laughs> totally, totally. I mean, I love to layer up. I am, a, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> like my nature yeah. and I love layering, but at the same time, you can still layer, but just have things that just make sense and that are hard working. You don't need to layer just because you bought lacy product, you know, lousy products that yeah. kind of like lacy. It's like you can layer and also be multitasking. And I think that that's really a win-win. Exactly. No, I love that. So um, kind of as we as we wrap up our conversation, I'm <laughs> sure you you know that we like to ask our, our guests kind of the the same same few questions towards the end. So I wonder if you can tell us, um, you know, maybe one or two tips on how you live eco-friendly every day, whether it's related to beauty or just your general life. I know that you're an animal and plant lover too. So curious if you had anything fun to share with the audience. Sure. Well, I don't know if they're fun. It's just kind of <laughs> where I am in my, sure. in my journey. So I just started composting which was a very big, nice, <laughs> was a very important milestone for me because I, ha I am not like good with like, uh, you know, the maintenance of the composting. Yes. So, but I finally got around it and I'm doing it and I feel super proud of myself that because we consume a lot of vegetables and fruits here in my house. So it was just massive quantities of all of that going into the landfill. And every time I felt like sick to my stomach. So that started last year, uh, late last year, and I'm like super psyched about that. That's great. Um, you probably give yourself a, a, a high five internally when you do it. I'm also the same way. I'm not, I didn't use to compost very much, but I've tried to increase that a little bit. And I think just knowing that, you know, the, the, the food scraps are actually going to be utilized in a more efficient way is, is I, super important. I always give myself a high five. <laughs> totally. And I think that the other thing that it's a little underrated, it's, just becoming a better consumer, right? Like I think yes. that is at the cornerstone of trying to make good decisions. So for example, if fair trade is important for you, get familiarized with the seal of the people that are actually doing fair trade and then buy those products that have that seal. Or if for you, it's important that you buy things that come in packaging that has responsible, uh, you know, uh, you know, that are responsible to the forest, then Make sure that you know what that seal look like so that when you're out there buying things, you look out for the seal. And I think that 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 is what really tells you if your values are expressed in your purchasing decisions, you know, exactly. a little bit of, you know, it's a little bit of research, but it's not unsurmountable research. And it's something just to 
be mindful about because a lot of the companies that actually go through the trouble of having seals, I, I mean, we have like so many seals and I can tell you that my team goes nuts with all that comes with seals. Yes. <laughs> Not only the expenses around the seals, but there's audits around the seals. There's information sharing around the seals. Like EcoCert comes to our facility every quarter, all the way from France. Wow. To check absolutely everything about what we do. You know, there the are investments of time and energy and resources that are honestly optional for companies. No one is telling us that we need to have every single aspect of our business certified by EcoCert, but we do it because we're trusting that customers are appreciating that through understanding seals and certifications. And, and I think that that has been such an important thing for me as, as a consumer too, when I go out and buy other brands. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we talk about this a lot on the Good Together podcast, but just knowing what your values are, right? Like figuring out whether or not you care more about, you know, the human equation versus the waste equation. I know we all care about these things, but of course, when we take a seat and we really think about it, you'll find that one of these things usually is better to prioritize for you. And so you're right, going out, learning those certifications, those seals, et cetera, to be looking out for, I think is is super important. And then really the last question I had for you was, was more about the general ethical and sustainable movement right now. Um, like what's exciting to you about this as somebody who has, you know, been around since 2007, I'm sure you have seen this shift, you know, from an even bigger bird's eye view than most of us. So curious to know, like what excites you the most about the ethical and sustainable movement right now? Sure. So a couple of things. One, I mean, I'm super nerdy when it comes to sustainability and and on and, and all the advancements. <laughs> so for us, sustainability is like a work in progress, right? Because it's yes. so much and you're evaluating all the changes, figuring out how do you incorporate it into, into your uh into what you do. And I love like the response that suppliers are having to the pressures from company like ours and that they're responding and 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 really investing the money in creating real sustainable and ethical solutions for all of us because i feel that that's where you see the result of all the pressure and all the work right absolutely um, i also feel that a lot of companies are taking their pledge to sustainability more seriously i mean i you know for many years sustainability has been something that a lot of companies have treated as something tertiary to their products right yes. it's like okay we're here polluting and doing all this like you know, uh, depleting business, but we are going to choose a charity and we're going to give a lot of money to that charity. And then that's our sustainability efforts. Right. But for me to become, a, I mean, all of those are like really nice gestures and all very good, but to be a sustainable company, you need to start by really looking inside and making sure that whatever you produce is sustainable in it of itself. Absolutely. Right? I agree with and, you. And that to me is true sustainability. And I am seeing more of that. I think that, you know, that we have a long way to go, but I think that the intentions are there. And I think that that is so important, right? Because sustainability is a win-win for us. It's uh, you know, for everybody and, and sustainability shouldn't never be like a marketing thing. Like for us, it has never been about a marketing thing. It's about a way of doing business for the future, for future generations and business that you don't feel bad about that. You have to like, Oh, like, you know, if there were better options, like why did I not take the better route? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and then, and again, those are hard decisions because a lot of times they are, um, you know, like as a result of that, you're, price point end up being more, more. <laughs> that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's what you need to weigh, right? It's like, oh, do we go cheaper, but then it's not as sustainable? Or do we go this route and it's going to be more expensive? And we usually take the, the, the difficult road, to be quite honest, like the hard decisions that need to be made every day, but that I think that are super important and completely non-negotiable and also is what our clients are expecting. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that you and your team have been at the forefront of this, um, you know, for years, uh, you know, I think it's just so, so impactful and so important. And, you know, what the, the questions that you talk about internally are the same ones that we ask ourselves as conscious consumers, right? Like, what am I, you know, when, when it's time for me to purchase, 
uh, what am I going to do? Am I actually going to make a difference or do I need to, you know, wait on that decision a little bit more, but just even having these conversations is so important. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. I feel like I've learned so much about the way a clean beauty business can operate or really even just a sustainable business in general. And, you know, like I said, big fan of your products, love them. Um, and just, just thankful to have you on the podcast. Oh, thank you, Laura. Big kiss. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Good Together. As always, you can get show notes and explore lots more content related to all things eco-friendly living by checking out brightly.eco slash podcast. And don't forget to join in on the conversation that's happening on our Facebook group. Simply search Good Together Ethical Shopping and it'll come up. You can also leave us a question through voicemail. The link is on brightly.eco slash podcast. If you're into social media, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, and all of the channels. Our username is brightly.eco. Finally, we want to leave you with a reminder. Every day is a chance for you to create change, and you're already covered for today since you joined us here on the podcast. Stay kind and live brightly. And live brightly. And live brightly. And live brightly.